What's going on guys? Welcome back to another YouTube video. Today we're going to be doing an unhinged breakdown of the problems that we are coming across not even a week into the MLB season, especially when it comes to things like the pitch clock. And it comes to things like human umpires who think everybody paid money and came to the stadium to watch them do their job. Nevertheless, here's the situation. We're going to jump straight into the action. Okay. Today's matchup was between the Diamondbacks and the Padres. It's a Tuesday afternoon game. The bottom of the first inning. Manny Machado at the plate against Zach Gallen. Relatively entertaining star matchup. We don't really get to get the full effect of it because, you know, Gallen's got, got to, he's got to get rid of the ball in 15 seconds. Uh, so he's got to go. He's got to go quickly, right? Machado's also got to get in the box quickly. It's the nature of the new game of baseball, the new pitch clock that Rob Manfred implemented uh, to make sure that games go quicker, to make the game easier and uh, more appealing to those who don't watch the game, to get more people to watch, to increase the ratings, to make more money for the owners because he only cares about the well-being of the owners and the money in their pockets. Nevertheless, Machado's at the plate, and it's a 3-1 count. So let's see how this unfolds here. As we uh, let well, this play out, the clock a little bit so far. It's... So, the Padres announcer Don Rosillo, noted, incredibly talented, you know, good announcer in the sport of baseball, he makes a comment here about Zach Gallen and how Zach Gallen seems to be pushing, you know, the limits of the pitch clock. And you can see here the pitch clock is down here at the bottom of the screen. It's in the inside of the little diamond on the Bally Sports score bug, okay? So you can see 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and then he starts his motion. So he every time he throws, so he is getting the most out of the 15 seconds here with nobody on. So Don Rosillo notices, like, yeah, he's really milking that pitch clock, right? I mean, he's starting his windup right with two seconds left. Uh, God forbid, right? And I'm not saying Don Rosillo is, but, like, everyone's now looking at the pitch clock because that's all that matters. That's all we care about, right? That's the main talking point. That's how you play the game. You got to go quick, 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 quick. So now we have 3-2, all right? Full count, two outs, nobody on, bottom of the first. Very close to a violation each time. So, again, what I want you to notice in this last in this sequence here, after this pitch, so Machado swings to make it 3-2, and two, okay? I want you to notice the pitch clock, and I'm going to count it down. 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8. Okay, another thing to note here. For those of you who aren't familiar with the pitch clock rules, as a batter, you need to be in the box, two feet, attentive with your eyes on the pitcher with eight seconds to go on the pitch clock. And again, note the pitch clock here at the bottom of the screen. Okay, in the pitch time, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8. So it's at 8 right now. It's at 8 right now. And as you can see, as we look over here, Machado is still got the old batting gloves loosened up. He's dialing it up. He's ready to go. You know, he, he's loosened them up. So we have 8 seconds on the pitch clock. According to the rules, this is a pitch clock violation. Pitch clock violation. Therefore, it should be an automatic strike on Manny Machado. He should be called out because he has two strikes on him, and the at-bat would be over. Immediately following this, okay? As you can see, there's still eight seconds on the pitch clock here, and Machado's got his hand up towards the umpire. So in the span of that one second, right, they talk about those tenths of a second, a lot of times like in a basketball shot clock or a game clock. In the span of when the clock got to, like, let's just say for argument's sake, 8.9 to 8.1, Machado went from fixing to calling and asking for time from Ron Culpa, the umpire. He goes, Man, he, was not he goes to call for time. Machado thinks he gets time because the umpire goes timeout, timeout. And as you can see here, right afterwards, he puts the fist up. Machado's not ready. He's out. Wow. Strike three. So with eight so, again, now Machado is going to say, I was calling for time. I was calling for time. I was calling for time. Right? Here we go. I was calling for time. He's frustrated. He goes, Ron. I, three. Wow. No. And, and Ron, Culpa, Ron Culpa says, no, no, I didn't see it. I didn't see it. I couldn't hear you. I didn't see it. I couldn't hear you. Right? That's probably. Manny says, I was trying to call time. Here comes Bob Melvin. Right? And he's, he's putting his hand up like, 
Ron, uh, Ron Culpa, I was calling time. I was calling time. Now you'll see Machado get a little bit more animated. It's frustrating, right? He just struck out. Strike three. It's a, it's a strike. And he goes, man, you can't do that to me or something like that. He says, you can't, you know, you can't do that to me. You can't let me, you know, you can't do that. He was not ready and looking back out at the pitcher. He goes, I'm calling time. I'm calling time. Strike three. It's because you can't can do that to me. Something like that. Ron Culpa, Ron Culpa, again, come into this game, got the memo from the league or, you know, whoever he was talking to before the game that said, hey, Ron, make sure everybody at the stadium knows that they came to watch you umpire and throw people out of the game. So Ron Culpa so says, actually, Manny, you're gone. Oh, no. And Bob Melvin has been ejected. So here's the, here's the pitch clock down here in the bottom right corner. 10, 9, 8. So technically, this one could go either way because as I freeze this frame here with eight seconds on the pitch clock, Machado is asking for time. Ron Culpa basically decides not to grant it to him, or at this point, Ron Culpa has the decision, the judgment call of did he get the call of time off in time to not violate the pitch clock rules, or was it 50-50, and he's kind of got to decide in his head, right, if he's going to give grant him time or not. A lot of times you see this pre-pitch clock, the batter is asking for time, 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 and the umpire doesn't grant it to him, and then the pitcher delivers the ball. Batter's not ready, right? So this one could go either way. I think one way you could certainly avoid this situation is get rid of the pitch clock, but that's different, right? That's beside the point. Uh, so Ron Culpa says you're out, and so Manny Machado is ejected from the game. He's still arguing. He's still barking with Ron Culpa, and uh, – you know, Ron Culpa's like, oh, I really wanted to throw him out, Bob. Bob, I wanted to throw him out. Bob, I wanted to throw him out of the game. You don't understand. He goes, you you can't you can't do shit like that, is what Machado says, basically. And Culpa goes, oh, boy, here comes my time to shine. Get out of here, Manny. Superstar, $30 million a year, Manny Machado. Get out of this game because you're frustrated about a rule that I enforced that was created and implemented by a commissioner who doesn't really know much about the sport of baseball and just wants to make more money for the owners. So Machado gets thrown out. He's Not still arguing. Objective. And my favorite, honestly, my, one of my favorite parts, and this is the part we'll get into with Ron, and then we'll break down a little bit more of the game, is every time, let's, well, let's just look at this example, and then we'll go into the other examples I have about Ron Culpa. But specifically in this situation, they show Ron Culpa, right? He's never, I, You'll see in the other examples, he is never, never doing what umpires are supposed to do in confrontational situations like this, which is to be maybe more what this first base umpire is doing, diffusing the situation, right? If the umpire or if the manager or the player is asking for an explanation, that's one thing, but it certainly doesn't seem to be, to be the case. They're disagreeing right? Melvin, Machado, they disagree with the judgment call, essentially, that Ron Culpa has made behind the plate, whether or not to grant him time, whether it was a pitch clock violation. Yet another part of the game that has given the umpires more power, more responsibility. So Melvin's disagreeing, Machado's disagreeing, and my favorite part about this whole situation is that every time they show Ron Culpa, not only in this confrontation, but the ones we'll see shortly, he never looks like he, you know, is like uncomfortable or he's like, come on, guys, like, let's just, let's diffuse this. Let's get over it. He seems to be enjoying himself. He seems to be happy. He seems to be like, he seems to be like, Manny, Manny, come on, man. Like, you can't, like, let's go. Manny, Manny. I mean, come on. You really think I wasn't going to throw you out? They came out here to see me, man. Come on. But it's not even like happy. It's like this incredibly arrogant smile on his face. That is just infuriating. Oh, As we see him here, he's looking at Bob Melvin. He's like smiling right there. He's looking at him. Oh, here we go. This is probably, well, no, let's see. They show this afterwards. So there's Machado getting tossed in the first inning, by the way, of a game over dispute on a judgment call. Uh, I think this is where, right here. Right here, he's talking, and Manny's probably like, what is your problem? Like, what, why did you, like, throw me out when I said you can't do that to me? Look, look, and he's, he's walks away, gives a ball to the, gives a ball to the, the old ball boy. He's trying to talk, you know, Bob Melvin's trying to talk to him, and uh, that's the end of it, right? So, 
that's the end of that, right? And then we head over to to uh, Twitter, okay? And there's a few different examples here. And these are some tweets that I have pulled up. So this is John Boy's tweet uh, and a couple different examples of uh, Ron Culpa making a name for himself. This was a GIF that was created by uh, John Boy that was a, from a, a lip-reading video that he did where he verbatim read the lips of Ron Culpa arguing with A.J. Hinch, former Astros manager. And, he, and Ron Culpa is verbatim quoted here. I mean, it's as obvious as day with the lip-reading. He's saying, I can do whatever I want. And no matter the context in that situation, no matter the context, that is unacceptable. That cannot happen under any circumstances. It absolutely cannot be words that are uttered by an umpire in any setting on any Major League Baseball field. Okay? So that was brought up and somebody resurfaced it on my Twitter timeline. And then as you see here, when you click on the tweet, John Boy's saying it as in reference to uh, his breakdown of Ron Culpa's incident and what was the impetus for that incident where he was telling AJ Hinch, I can do whatever I want. This is the incident that J uh, John Boy breaks down. So let's take a look here as we uh, slide my face cam over here and uh, see what exactly what, what breaks down. Okay. For a fight. Here's the pitch, and it might be low, it might be away. They call a strike. Immediately, the entire Astros bench is up in arms. And he's yelling right back. So, again, again, here, I'm going to break this down. And, and, and my face cam was blocking a little bit here, as it appears. Keep an eye over here on the Astros bench. Okay. This was after the pit. The pitch had ba has basically now just crossed the plate. Right? So the pitch is not a strike. Not a strike. It's not even close. Like, it's not even anywhere near the strike zone. Strike is right here. Ball's getting thrown back. Astros bench. A bunch of guys throw their arms up. Ron, what the hell, man? Really? Come on. And he's, he's over there, and he's ready to go. He is ready to go. What do you want? I do whatever I want. I'm Ron Culpa. And he's got that little smirk, that arrogant underlying smirk going on as he, look at him. He's like, look at you guys. I can do whatever I want. So they all yelled right away. Like, where's that? Where's that? Instead of just ignoring or saying shut up, he goes, wow, that's not a strike. Where is it? That's not a strike. And just yelling right back. Like he's yep. one of the players. Yep. And, and AJ Hinch. I'm assuming I haven't even seen this breakdown. And again, shout out to John Boy. They do he does a great job with these breakdowns, and I'm not trying to just steal his thunder. This is an example of Ron Culpa, and we're gonna break down what happened later on. And I'm assuming, okay, as we go through this video, and he breaks down, you know, like he, yeah, it looks like they're yelling and they're arguing and whatever, and Ron Culpa. And oh, okay, yeah. So he's saying, don't look over here, don't look over here, right? So it looks like what's happening is like Ron Culpa is just glaring. Just glaring into the dugout because he's got issues. It's about him, right? Those fans, these guys, like this lady right here, uh, this lady, this guy, those guys, when they bought the tickets to the game, they bought the tickets because they're like, we want to go watch Ron Culpa umpire behind home plate. That's why they bought the tickets, right? They were like, we want to go watch him. We don't want to watch uh, Mike Miner pitch for the Rangers or Tyler White taking at bat. We want to watch this guy call balls and strikes, man. It is just... It's such a thrill. So Ron Culpa is just a man looking for problems, which is perfect and seats, uh, suits him and his profession perfectly as a major league umpire. Because, you know, as a major league umpire, he never gets calls wrong. So when somebody does want to challenge his judgment, he's able to come at them and say, I never get anything wrong. I'm going to smirk arrogantly at you while I tell you that I never get anything wrong and I can do whatever I want. So it looks like in this video with AJ Hinch, he's looking over and AJ Hinch is like, dude, I don't want, don't, why are you looking in our dugout? Why are you looking in our dugout? Don't worry about what's going on over here. There's a baseball game going on in front of your face, uh, but you don't seem to care because again, you signed up to be uh, an instigator as a home plate umpire. Pay attention over there. And then he's pointing at somebody who is that guy right there? Which one? That one. 
So he threw out some random guy, it looks like. He just, like, threw out some dude. And so that's the the nature of Ron Culpa as a as an umpire, okay, is that he he loves confrontation. He loves problems. And that in itself is a huge problem. So now we find ourselves in the top of the six. Nabil Krizmat's on the mound for the Padres, uh, a bullpen pitcher who notoriously does work relatively quickly, right? The guy likes to get the ball back. He likes to get the sign, come set, and get to get this game going a little bit, which is something that I can understand and respect if you're a guy, a pitcher, that likes to move quickly, right? Totally fine. No problem with me. So he just had given up a, a hit and a run. New batters walking up to the plate, and I'm not exactly sure where the timer – there is really no timer to be shown as the between batter situation, right? It's usually pitch by pitch in the little diamond here at the bottom. So – Chris Matt is on the mound. He's thrown 22 pitches so far. He just gave up uh, a run, like I said. And now he's on the mound. Five to three. The run just scored. As you can see here, Nola just threw him the ball. Ron Culpa is bent over in front of him, uh, cleaning off the home plate with, with his little broom. So catcher's coming up for the uh, Arizona Diamondbacks, okay, as you can see. So freeze here. No idea where the pitch clock is in this situation, and honestly, it's not applicable, and you'll see why. So Ron Culpa's got his back to home uh, to the pitcher. He's putting his mask on. A couple guys aren't paying attention. Catcher's digging into the box. Chris Matt's on the mound already, and Nola, if you can see here, is actually has his glove his glove covered with his right hand, and he's pressing on the pitch comm communication system with Chris Matt at pitcher. So he's calling the pitch already. So in the next three or so seconds, Chris Matt is going to know what pitch he's going to throw. That's not enough time for either of these people, these guys, to get ready to go, okay? So you'll see Chris Matt is looking in. Still no attention from the home plate umpire. Still no home, no attention from the batter. He's digging in. He's still trying to get his bearings within him. Culpa has now just, just gotten into position. Batter's still digging in, and according to the 20-second clock back here, I think has some time, maybe. I don't know if the clock hadn't started yet or if Culpa is supposed to signal like, hey, start the clock. If that's the case, then, then Culpa's obviously not doing his job and can't handle the situational awareness of it as the home plate umpire because Chris Matt now is looking in, and now he is set, and the batter is just now looking out to Chris Matt as a pitcher. And apparently, according to the new rules with the pitch clock, batter has to be attentive and then the pitcher is allowed to start his pitching motion which includes coming set or in the case of the windup starting his windup so he looks out and sees the pitch is already set takes his hand off the bat looks back at culpa like this and goes uh dude wtf i have no idea what's going on i'm not ready to hit even though i'm in the box and i'm looking at it i'm not ready to hit which you know it's fine whatever culpa back there is sleeping and then Chris Matt is set, delivers the pitch, throws a strike. Steha, right? 0-1. And, and Herrera's looking back at Ron Culpa going, dude, what is going on? I wasn't ready to go. He's quick pitching me. That pitch in for a strike. Then you see Culpa throw his hands up because Ron Culpa isn't able to just take accountability of the fact that he probably, maybe he made a mistake. And instead it's just like, I, I can do whatever I want. And so, Herrera, you're wrong. What am I supposed to do? The guy did it, and I wasn't paying attention. So now, and then as, of course, is the case, the Diamondbacks bench, which is located on here to his left, our right, is barking at Ron Culpa going, dude, what are you doing? He quick pitched him. He came set before he was attentive and ready in the box. He wasn't able to, to react in time, whatever the case may be. So now he's down 0-1 because you're asleep behind the plate. He throws his hands up again to the Diamondbacks dugout and goes, guys, I'm never wrong. What are you complaining about? So Culpa's never wrong. Ready. Herrera's over there looking into his dugout, looking at Culpa. Like, what do I got to do with this guy? This guy is just uh, on another planet right now. Culpa's like, you got to get in the box. Okay. Now, as you can probably hear, right, as we turn up the game volume itself, the fans are starting to become extremely unsettled because it's like, this is just a piss fest at this point. Like, who can flex harder, right? So as we go back here, 
they take a listen to the fans and the griping. Starts to get more and more unsettled as the situation develops. For strike and Herrero said he wasn't ready. So again into it with Culpa now. Said he quick pitch. So then, then a, as we were unable to see in this situation. Chris Matt, who just delivered a strike and probably did quick pitch a little bit, right? Herrera's sitting there like, dude, what do I got to do? All of this, none of it matters because we're on the clock. We got to go. We got 20 seconds to do this. Uh, we got to get this pitch off. Chris Matt knows that. Herrera's complaining. Culpa's complaining. Now you see his hand go up as I shrink my face cam here a little bit. He calls time because apparently on the mound right now, out of frame that we can't see, Chris Matt's now already set again. And of course, the batter, his face is not attentive. Pitch clock's only at 14, as we can see down here. So Culpa calls time and is like, dude, you you got to give him. He points. He goes, that is a pitch clock violation, I guess. Even though the time, there's still plenty of time on the clock. Uh, he quick pitched him. That's a violation. He was not ready, as he points at the batter. He was not ready and attentive to hit. You got to make sure he's attentive and ready to go. You watch, and he turns around to the score booth and says, one and one now. So instead of 0 and one, now it's one and one. So it's an automatic ball on Krizmat, even though the pitch clock timer didn't run out. And it seems like almost Ron Culpo was just doing that because the Diamondbacks were upset about it. So, Tori Lavella was up on the top step, complaining about it, and then Ron Culp was like, all right, I guess I'll give him a ball. And then he's at back out there because Chris Matt's like, what's going on? I just did the same thing twice. The first time was a strike. The second time, I'm not allowed to do it, and it's an automatic ball. The first time, uh, you were dead asleep as an umpire behind a plate, and now you were awake and attentive because people called you out on it and said, hey, wake up. He just quick pitched. So, Chris Matt's like, which one am I supposed to do? And so Culpa goes, you have to, he's got to have his eyes on you, right? He's going like this. He's got to have his eyes on you before you can come set, right? So he goes behind the plate. All the while, the fans are like, what are we doing? What are we doing? What are we doing? So now he's set again. So Chris Matt is like literally set as Ron Culpa is just not ready to go. I mean, he's, like, already set. He goes, you got to pay attention. Culpa goes back there. Chris Matt already knows what pitch he's going to throw. So Chris Matt's like this. Chris Matt steps on the rubber and is already set. So isn't that a balk? Are the other umpires asleep? What's going on? Is that not a balk? He just came He just came set set on the, on the rubber. Then he delivers a pitch. It's two and one. And at the end of it, the truth of the matter and the point still stands strong. And that point is the pitch clock is entirely and utterly unnecessary. It should not be implemented in the game in the manner that it is being implemented. You cannot go from no pitch clock, no timer, no nothing to all of a sudden now there's a 15 second time between pitchers, uh, between pitches with nobody on base, 20 seconds with a runner on, 30 seconds between batters, so on and so forth. Additionally, there's a lot of different ways that these guys could go about potentially tweaking a situation like the one that you saw with Machado, like the one you saw with Krismat, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. A couple different ones that I saw that were that were relatively refreshing. One example that I saw that would potentially that would come into play and become a really easy and quick and simple solution is something that was proposed by former Major League Baseball player Mark Loretta, who uh, is a special assistant to the Padres and has a little bit of a rooting interest right in that situation. But this seems to be in reference to the Machado spot where he was trying to call time, but like didn't really get it off in time, but also like he did, but it doesn't like it, it's, it's fine. Like just relax. It's just it's baseball. But his suggestion is, it seems like the logical tweak to the pitch clock rule should be that the hitter, if they violate the pitch clock and haven't used their designated one timeout per at-bat, should be able to take that violation. It should be a timeout, right? So in that situation, Machado wouldn't even have to 
put his hand up to call time because it would be a violation, but it would be umpire would just go, all right, time, you know, time out, basically. Start it over again. Clearly, this guy's trying to, you know, take his time out. He stepped out of the box. He's doing his batting gloves, whatever the case may be. Because otherwise, it's just going to be a judgment call on if the guy called time or not in enough time at eight seconds. So at the end of the day, the pitch clock is wildly unnecessary. Uh, it's not a part of baseball. It should never be a part of baseball because baseball was the only sport without a clock. Now it has a clock. And if they want to continue to use it, you know, I think there are ways that they can work through it slightly and implement it in a way that it's still applicable and gets rid of the guys who take 45 seconds between pitches with nobody on base in the fifth inning. Guys like Pedro Baez. There's a couple other relievers that work like painfully, painfully slow. And that is definitely an issue that should be rectified in some capacity. And believe it or not, the last thing I'll leave you with is that that actually was a thing that was implemented within the league before the pitch clock actually became so prevalent and an official rule. Um, I know somebody close to me that I knew personal on a personal level back actually when I was in like middle and high school, kind of a friend of a friend, family friends, like older son who spent some time with me and he ended up pitching in the major leagues. And the second game he ever pitched in the major leagues, he came from the, he was a bullpen pitcher, came out of the bullpen. And, and by the way, his name was Mike Ekstrom. In case you don't believe me, look him up, pitched for Tampa Bay, for the Padres, a couple other teams. And he told us about a time he came out of the bullpen and did his warm-up pitches, eight pitches between the inning. There was no in-between inning timer back then. There was no pitch clock, obviously, anything like that. Delivered his warm-up pitches, pitched a scoreless inning. All was good and fine. And the next day, he showed up to the stadium, had a letter from Major League Baseball, the league office, in his, in his locker, a memo from the league. And they're like, uh, hey, Mike, like, you know, last night you violated the the – designated time of uh, warm-up time between innings which is um, two minutes and 25 seconds this is your first warning if it's if it happens again you will receive a fine from the league for five hundred dollars or for five thousand dollars or whatever the case may be and i think that structure in and of itself first of all most people didn't know about that second of all that's the structure that should be implemented in this situation the pitch clock should be 30 seconds and if anybody violates it then they should be fined twenty five thousand dollars Every time they violate that that pitch clock violation of 30 seconds. If Pedro Bides is out there just watching paint dry and 35 seconds goes by between a pitch with nobody on base, he shows up to his locker that night with a $50,000 fine from the league. A lot of money. But guess what it's going to do? It's going to incentivize these guys to work quicker for those guys who take forever in between pitches. For the rest of the guys, it's entirely unnecessary. Yeah, you know what it is doing? It's shaving off about 30, 25 minutes of game time. That doesn't do anything for anybody. Supposedly, it's supposed to make the game more watchable or shorter or more action or more balls in play, things of that nature. And I can understand that to a certain degree, but those of us who've already watched baseball and do watch baseball on a nightly and consistent basis or go to games or pay a bunch of money to be at the stadium and sit in nice seats... We paid money to sit in those nice seats so that we could watch three hours of, of baseball, not so we could watch two hours and two minutes of baseball and guys getting sped up and not being able to be ready to go in the batter's box because they don't have any time to gather their breath after they take a big swing. You know, and these are these are certain tweaks and stuff that have apparently been passed down to the umpires. They clearly have no idea what they're doing. Some guys do, but a guy like Ron Culpa, an umpire who is clearly already unfit for the position getting handed another gigantic responsibility and having to sit there and manage the pace, the clock, the strike zone, check swings, catchers interference, all these different factors that are simply just too much for a guy to handle. So why don't we just take it out of the umpire's hands, get rid of it, make it 30 seconds universally between batters, uh, with nobody on base and between batters with a guy on base, right? Make it 30 seconds, or let's do even 25, 25 seconds, and let the game play out as it will. And also, even then, maybe, let's, like, you could throw a little earpiece into the umpires, just like the replay system that they already have implemented, and go, hey, just so you know, Pedro Baez, guys, while you guys are umpiring this game, he's taken 37, 35, and 33 seconds in the last three pitches. 
you need to stop the game and go out and tell him to hurry the hell up. Otherwise, this is going to be brutal. He's going to walk into his locker with $200,000 in fines. So there's a lot of different ways we can work around it. I think number one step should be to make the pitch clock longer. Number two, if I had the choice and ultimate power, I would completely get rid of it. But that's not my choice. It doesn't matter. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and the unhinged breakdown and the anger a little bit that I delivered this with because it is, in my opinion, contributing and having an umbrella effect on the game of baseball. A lot of people didn't and aren't able to quantify when it first happens and especially aren't able to quantify or compare at the same level when they're talking about, oh, well, it was implemented in the minor leagues and it was really successful. And that's fantastic. And I'm glad that that happens. And the minor leagues should always have a pitch clock. Why? Because those games don't matter. Those games don't matter. Nobody cares about the Reno Aces and the Albuquerque Isotopes. Nobody cares about that game. Major League Baseball games, there's so much on the line. For an at-bat to be ended on a pitch clock violation and then the player to subsequently get ejected for disputing that is so unacceptable. It cannot happen. It cannot happen. One more time, it cannot happen again. Oh, it's an overreaction. Oh, you'll get used to it. All the stuff that I've heard, man, I, I heard it. I watched spring training. I watched a week, a week worth of games, and it's causing so many more and different issues and problems that we have to rectify that I, it's just not worth it, and it doesn't do anything. Nobody's going to watch baseball now that never watched it before because the games are 35 minutes shorter. Nobody. 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 So anyways, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Be sure to like the uh, video if you guys enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments what you guys think of the pitch clock because obviously you know where I stand on it. But I'm open to discussion, man. I'm always open to, to different viewpoints, different perspectives. So let me know in the comments where you guys stand on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you guys enjoy this type of content, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace out.